Hi guys, so today I'm gonna to show you how I customized a Supermicro 825 chassis to add a dual hot swap uh, OS boot drive tray. Okay, so in front of you here is a Supermicro 825 chassis, and this is an eight bay, three and a half inch eight bays um, chassis. Now, at the top here above the hot swap bays, there are actually some additional areas where you can install uh, various options. So over here, for example, this top slot uh, can be swapped out for a USB port and serial port uh, adapter. And the one right underneath it can be swapped out for a optical drive. One of those slim laptop optical drives can go in here. And then there are these two, um, what looks like just covers uh, right above the, uh, the uh, hot swap base. But they're actually trays where uh, It'll allow you to install a three and a half inch drive or uh, two and a half inch drives as a permanent installation, meaning they're not hot swappable like this, so where they can kind of come out easily. Now, let me show you uh, what these trays look like. In the back here, there's a little tab that you can press on that'll release the uh, tray, and then you can kind of just press it out. And so, these are the trays that go in there, and uh, so you can see there are holes here to allow you to install a three and a half inch drive and then there are holes on the bottom to allow you to bottom mount a two and a half inch SSD. Okay, so this this is meant for kind of a more permanent installation, not something you can easily hot swap. Um, but I used one of these trays to uh, modify this into uh, a hot swap bay for my OS boot drives. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So first, uh, I basically removed this this front cover um, or the kind of the, the face of it is actually removable. There's only two screws, one here and one here that hold onto this. So if you remove these screws, this plate just kind of comes off. Okay, so I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I have over here another 825 where I've already done that. And so you can see in this tray, the, the front cover is already gone and there's the, the holes where the screws were. Okay, so I use this along with this thing. Now, this kind of has a interesting name. They call it a mobile rack, okay? So if you go to Amazon or, or eBay and you, you can search for a mobile rack and, um, and you'll find this. And this holds two SSDs, two and a half inch SSDs, okay? And the nice thing about this is that they're a trayless, meaning you don't have to install a tray onto your SSD like these things in order to uh, insert the SSD. You simply just take the whole bare SSD and just plug it in. So that's actually kind of nice. I, I like that. And there's this lever and it's kind of spring loaded and it kind of just presses it in. So, and there's two of these in here. And so on the back side, uh, it's powered by a four pin Molex. And it's uh, because this has two SSDs, there's a SATA one and SATA two port. And so all you have to do is connect all that up and then you can, uh, you know, install an additional two SSDs. And I use this along with this tray to make uh, make this available to install my operating system and I have two so I can mirror them and have a little bit of redundancy All right, so the way I installed this into this tray is first um, I took all the screws here. There's like some black screws here. There's three here and three here Take all the screws off and I take all the internals out Okay, and the reason I do that is because I'm going to be drilling into the outer cover in order for uh, this to mount to this tray and I didn't want to accidentally end up drilling into, you know, electronics or any other components inside. So I did undid all the screws and took all the internals out and I just had the outer casing. And then I placed this in here and you'll have to kind of decide how you want to adjust this because, um, or how you want to place this because, you know, it's, you can slide it back and forth and whatnot. And, uh, you know, so I just kind of picked a, a position that I felt uh, was good and uh, I took a punch and I center punch uh, through the hole, these two holes. So this is the hole that held the front face plate. And this is the rearward uh, hard drive mounting hole. So I just punched uh, through that in order to uh, leave a mark on the aluminum casing of the mobile rack. So then I would know where to drill. So once I did that on both sides, so I did it here, here, and here and here, I drilled through the, the, the casing and then uh, I then used uh, some taps to uh, create some threads into these and basically just match the threads to the screws. 
So th these are the small screws that hold onto the faceplate. And these are just hard drive mounting screws that are meant for super micros. And so I just uh, threaded these holes, okay? And then you can kind of mount this in here and secure it with those screws. Now, this is a little bit of a loose fit. And so what I did was add a, um, a little plastic washer kind of to the bottom on this side. And then I place this in here. And that gives it a little bit more of a snug fit. Okay. And then all you have to do is secure this with the screws. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So these are just the hard drive mounting screws. And that's for the rear hole. Oops. All right. And so long as you have the, the right threads tapped in here, they'll just you know, screw right in. Now, bear in mind, this casing is aluminum. So the threads are a little bit soft. You don't want to over torque this, uh, just kind of a snug, uh, tight would be good enough. And same thing for the other side. Okay. And then for the, f the forward, uh, screws, these have a slightly smaller head. So, um, I use a, of a P1 screwdriver here. And so these are the same screws that held on to the uh, front faceplate that I took off. Okay. And then one more. All right. So that's all you have to do to, uh, mount this mobile rack thing to this tray that goes in here. And then this then just kind of slides back in to that spot. And as you can see, it clicks uh, and engages the uh, the latch in the back. So this won't easily kind of come out. And, uh, you know, and I positioned this thing, like I said earlier, when I was trying to figure out where to tap the, uh, or where to drill the holes, I kind of positioned this thing to kind of be, um, more or less flush with the front here. And once you have that, uh, then you just have to plug in uh, the SATA uh, connectors. And I have these going to the motherboard. And this is a, a Molex adapter that is uh, an extension from the Molex available uh, from the power supply here. And so then you just kind of plug this in and it's a little hard to see the connectors because they're kind of recessed and behind this metal. Um, so I just kind of try to feel it out and let's see. Okay. There's the SATA port. I can feel it. I just gotta be able to put this out. Oh, there we go. Okay. And then there's another one right on top. Okay. So that's all there is to it. Uh, now you've got yourself a dual hot swap uh, trayless um, bay for your OS boot drives. And I've got some Intel SSDs here. Just, you know, you don't need anything fancy for the boot drives, just something reliable. And um, now I've got the, uh, the boot drives installed in here. All right. So. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys out. If anybody who has an 825 chassis, you know, you might like this idea in order to add your, uh, some uh, trays for your boot drives instead of maybe having them installed somewhere on the inside. Um, you can, you know, here's, here's another option for you. All right, so hopefully uh, that was helpful for anybody who has an 825. And uh, if you like this video, please click on like. And uh, if you'd like to see more videos from me, please subscribe to my channel. All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye.